Hello everyone, this is Lucky7DX, and welcome back to Let's Play Mario and Luigi, Bowser's inside story in the last episode. We defeated Blizzard Mippus, but Bowser is trapped once again in some sort of area. The Dark Star is inside him, it sort of made, like, forced its way inside of his body. I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going. No, not really, but, um, <laughs> I just had to make that reference, I'm sorry. It's, as inappropriate of a meme as it is, it has to be one of my favorite memes ever, just because, I don't know, maybe because it's inappropriate. Anyway, I'll go ahead and take off the treasure specs, because obviously not going to be very useful for this new area of the airway. And as long as we're sucking in Mimpus's cold air, that's kind of gross. I would not want to be sniffing anything coming out of that thing's nose. But um, it freezes everything in this area, which is going to come into play for a different bunch of different areas. So we have, like, you know, water flooding in, we've had booze, and now we have a sort of freeze mechanic. So, uh, once again, very interesting ways that they sort of incorporate Bowser into these uh, inside Bowser areas. Luigi, stop being such a pansy. I don't know, it does look pretty darn cool. I mean, if it's cold enough for water to freeze, it probably is pretty cold for people who are just wearing overalls and that's pretty much it, like overalls and shirts. I don't know, that'd be probably pretty cold. I love this scene though. Not. No! <laughs> and then Starlo just like, Starlo just peeks at Mario like, hey, and <laughs> he still does it. Luigi! It's not that cold, come on. But anyway, if you obviously, if you uh, move Bowser away, everything will become unfrozen, which is not good because of these platforms. Well, these, these water platforms actually don't come into play that much, surprisingly. Uh, the ice mechanic is usually used in a different sort of way. Uh, but as you can see, you know, every, obviously everything will unfreeze when you uh, get off of Midbus's nose, breath, cold thing. It is kind of cool that they sort of incorporate Midbus in such a way, though. Um, as like a source of cold air. I mean, that's precisely the reason why they made him uh, become Blizzard Midbus in the first place instead of like a normal Midbus fight. Kind of interesting that they did things that way. Regardless, the main thing is that it makes the floors slippery and then you'll run to these enemies. These are new enemies, by the way, obviously. Um, this is actually the final area in the game, technically. Uh, well, I guess it depends on what you consider an area, but it's uh, Martin Luigi's final area at the very least. Um, so these are the toughest enemies you'll be facing with Martin Luigi. Although, surprisingly, if you can combo this thing long, long enough, uh, you can actually kill it really easily. Just like that. So they, they can drop from above or they can sort of attack you from the side. If you hit their cork, it'll actually end the attack and uh, actually send them into a sort of stunned state. We'll see that later on when I hit the cork. But uh, if you manage to avoid the cork, you can actually just counterattack them to death, which is pretty cool. Um, all in all, they're pretty easy enemies. Um, we're going to see them a lot, though, in this area. That's another one right here, actually. And they are pretty hard to dodge because of the whole ice thing. It's hard to get a grip in the you know, build a slide. I guess you could... You, people keep saying, Lucky, why don't you do the dig underground trick? Well, A, I usually forget to. And B, um... Also, there's just different versions. I think I'm going to hit the cork. Yes! Cork, be gone. And, uh, as you can see, it's all flat now. That's just an example of what it looks like when it's dizzy while flat. While it's flat, I can't actually do any attacks. Couldn't really show that off because I actually stunned it, and thus it couldn't do any attacks twice. Uh, but we actually got a level up from that. We'll be getting a lot of level ups. This is definitely the best area to grind with for Mario Luigi. In fact, the game will explicitly recommend us to grind in this area. Uh, something I'll be showing off in the extra videos when we actually do the gauntlet. The gauntlet itself will be like, hey, the airway. Go there, train there, good times will be had by all, but level 27, not too shabby, we should be getting like up several levels in this area overall. It's a, it's not the longest area, I would say that there's other areas that are longer, but um, it's still pretty, I mean, it's, it's a usual sized Bowser area, I guess, or inside Bowser area. And this thing's gonna be in the way too, it's kinda hard to uh, dodge all their air puffs as well, and I, yeah, there's no way I'm gonna avoid that thing, whatever, we'll just fight it. Maybe I can even finish it off in one hit. Come on, kill, kill, then that's, I guess, what happens when it hits you. And obviously, uh, it can knock you down as well. Not the worst status, considering, you know, there's only one of them, you get your turn anyway, so who cares? But, um, as you can see, if you freeze the buttons, you can't hit the buttons. If you unfreeze the buttons, you can hit the buttons. So if you see buttons, unfreeze your shit basically. But then, floors! Uh, you cannot push blocks while they are unfrozen, so you must freeze the floors in order to push the blocks. So as you can see, we're going to be doing a lot of switching back and forth between, you know, ice and not ice, depending on the situation. Um, in fact, this whole place is going to be about sort of like the buttons versus the pushing sort of segment. So we're going to hit this button, and another block's going to come down, and then we're going to have to push this block, so we're going to have to freeze everything again. And that's, as you can see, yeah, no pushing while it's uh, unfrozen. Just sort of demonstrated that for you there. Just in case you didn't believe me, because I don't know, why would you guys not believe me? I mean, obviously, 
I'm not gonna lie to you, that would defeat the purpose of a Let's Play, would it not? But in case you don't believe me, there's your proof right there. Anyway, you need this, you think, oh, I could probably just spin across this gap, but actually there's not enough room for Luigi to jump on Mario there, so you can't actually spin across that gap, ironically enough. Um, hey, one up Deluxe, that's pretty good. I mean, we're in the end game, obviously these items are gonna be pretty good. Um, you'll be getting some pretty decently item, um, de pretty decent items throughout this whole area, including, um, one of the best items in the game that we already have. You'll see what I mean uh, later on if you haven't guessed it already. But you actually can get a second copy of them here, which is pretty cool. As you can see, you can get the dizzy stabs from these guys as well, and that's an example of you, uh, of the of the guy blowing up, as in reinflating himself. Um, over time, they will eventually reinflate themselves and thus be viable foes once more. But alas, um, th th those air cheeps are not the hardest enemy to face. There's gonna be a lot harder enemies in this area. There's a s there's a lot of air enemies in this area actually, just a lot of different kinds of enemies. Uh, over here, this room's actually pretty interesting because it ends up being a sort of hub that you're going to continue to return to throughout this whole area. Um, it's sort of like a central hub, but there's a bunch of warp pipes leading to that area. So um, it's sort of like a save area so you can continue to save as you make uh, your way across this. And it's just sort of a central hub. It's like the energy hole, how that has central hub, except this one's more connected via warp pipes than the fact that you keep returning to that area to do something. Um, none of the other areas really did have that much of a central hub, though. The flab zone didn't, and uh, the pipe works didn't either, so... Kind of interesting that in this endgame, they give you a easy access to a save point, like, every, like pretty often, actually. Surprisingly often, for uh, an endgame level. So, I guess they're just like, hey, the enemies, the enemies aren't even that bad, to be honest. I mean, none of them I would put on, like, Piranha Plorp Annoyance level. I'd say these enemies are generally pretty tame, uh, um, all things considered. They're just, they're, they are the, just because of the end game enemies, I guess, doesn't mean that they'd be the hardest thing. I mean, they should be the hardest thing, technically, but I guess they aren't. I don't know. It might be come down to per personal preference, actually, because, you know, maybe enemies that I find easy, others don't. Anyways, new mechanic here. When it's un when things are unfrozen, you can do this. You can press the button, and uh, water will form. If you freeze it, it will harden into an ice block that we can then use. And then you can hit this little thing, which will pour the ice block down on top of us. If it's water, obviously, it'll just sort of melt. It'll just sort of uh, spread away. You'll lose, and you'll have to stop the whole process over. And then we can use this ice block to push things. However, if you uh, leave your freeze and hit the button, as you can see, the ice melts. And thus, uh, we have to restart the process over there, because as you can see, we obviously need an ice block to make that jump. Uh, but we do need to uh, hit that button so you can unfreeze, or so we can open up that thing, because obviously, uh, like before, as you can see, uh, water will melt, uh, will take out, will get rid of the fire, even though you, the fire is just perpetually going. Apparently, just one dose of water will stop perpetually going fire for some strange reason. Uh, of course, before you do that, use the block to get up here. Um, and then, of course, you can unfreeze it, it will get rid of the fire. And then we can go ahead and hit the button. So kind of interesting how uh, just just all the different little things you have to do for this little puzzle. Um, I, I do like this area a lot. The airway has some very interesting puzzles. And they really do use the freeze mechanic, dare I say, better than any other of these mechanics in the game. You know, the the water one, the boo one. I think I mean those are used well, but I personally think the ice one's the coolest of all the different mechanics you do inside Bowser. I just think that they have a lot of creativity of the different kind of things you can do with it. It's really awesome. And the other cool thing about the airway is the whole theme of it, which is chasing the Dark Star right here. And what he's doing, his big master plan here, believe it or not, um, this stuff in the wall, that's Bowser's DNA. He is eating Bowser's DNA, and also, apparently according to him, it tastes really, really bad. Um, even the Dark Star... Yes, uh, what Fawful, what, what Fawful, yes. Her name is Fawful now. Starlo, you are now Fawful, congratulations. Well, um, what Starlo said, it gives him indigestion, which is pretty bad. Anyway, so um, naturally, like, let's just go ahead and attack it. Yeah, that's not a good idea. Evil giant star probably shouldn't attack it head on. We almost die. He almost chokes us to death with this force energy. He's now Darth Vader, apparently. Um, so we need another way to hit him. Well, what better to hit him with than with a giant ice block? So that's precisely what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, so the Dark Star's main goal, actually, that's what happens if you screw everything up. Um, <laughs> didn't intend to do that, but, um, I forgot to freeze everything. One step at a time, guys. Anyway, um, it's basically, he's basically trying to absorb Bowser's DNA. Why? That's something you're going to find out later, and it does make the game rather interesting. Partly because there's sort of two villains going on here. As you can see, by the way, he's learned the punch. He has Bowser's arms now, which is kind of creepy. Um, but there's essentially two villains in this game. Not only is Fawful a villain, but the Dark Star is, in in essence, its own villain. It is, it's actually a sentient entity. It's not just some dumbass star, power star who just floats in space forever, waiting for some hero to collect it. No, no, no. The Dark Star is freaking evil, and it has intelligence and all this shit. So we have to be rather careful of this. 
Uh, these blocks, rather, interesting when they're frozen, um, you that, that you, don't, you don't stick to them. But when they are un when they are unfrozen, uh, you do stick to them. So in order to basically free yourself from those blocks, you have to unstick yourself by freezing it. If that made any sort of sense. But uh, rather, just, the inter just such interesting mechanics in this whole area. I love it. Anyway, this thing, I love the name of this thing. It's called a stonk. Also, in case you didn't um, notice, all the enemies in this area are based off the Dark Star. They all have the Dark Star pattern to them. So, uh, apparently the Dark Star is... Other things from the Dark Star are invading... Um, well, actually, not every enemy. There, are some, there is one enemy that isn't based on the Dark Star. But apparently the Dark, Dark Star minions or pieces or whatever the heck these things are, they're invading Bowser's body, which can never be a good thing. Um, if you... I think, yeah, okay, we need to do a, a little spin jump over here. And we shall find another one of these ice blocks. So we're going to go ahead and use that. We just need to unfreeze everything first. Lots of different uses for this whole freezing on freezing thing. I love this section. It's just so cool. I love Mario's. I actually love Luigi's look better when he's hanging out Mario. He just looks. He looks so happy. It's just. It's just so funny. But um, actually, I think we're gonna. Um, oh, we're gonna. We should probably fall down here first. And there's a guy down there. Yeah, probably. Another one, yeah, that, that's another one of those Luigi fell down moments, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Luigi, why do you keep falling down? <laughs> just, just, all the time, he just falls down all the time. But I guess it was worth it, because we got Lazy Scarf, so thanks, Luigi, for falling down. You got ourselves an item for doing so, which is pretty awesome. But yeah, Luigi, he's just, he just always does the falling down. And he faces, he just randomly runs into enemies when he falls down. Just, for some reason, that's been the theme of both Partners in Time and this LP, is Luigi, it was... Well, okay, so it was Baby Luigi before, but um, just Lu a Luigi of some sort falling down and forcing shenanigans to occur because of it. I mean, we didn't have any game-breaking, or not game-breaking, but we didn't have any, like, ridiculous glitches on, like, uh, Partners in Time, but I love that look. He's just, he's so happy. He is so happy to be hugging. I, pro I, I actually did that a little early. I meant to uh, get all the way up there, because there's an item up there, so I kind of have to go all the way around now again, which kind of sucks. As you can see, we're probably going to have to face a stunk there, and ugh. I think out of way, we're gonna sit here and wait now. That's kind of a pain in the ass. I love how the shape stays frozen after you're, I mean, it makes sense that it would stay frozen, but I love how the, it stays in that sort of uh, odd shape after you leave it. I just think, just like, you know, the, little de the little details, they're pretty cool. You know, it doesn't freeze back into a queue, it freezes into a little curvy noodle looking thing, I guess. I have no idea. Anyway, none of the stonk, nothing new there. As you saw, the um the attacks of the stonk, I may as well quickly explain them. Also, we get Kingware. You could have bought this in the uh, star shop. It has it doesn't compare at all to our AOK wear or our uh, mus or, or our master wear. AOK wear and master wear are undisputably the best uh, overalls in the game, so there's no reason to equip anything else that you find in here. Anyway, uh, the stonk, the, the, the two attacks I didn't mention. Also, wait, by the way, the stonk's attacks can cause poison, if you didn't notice that before. Um, the cloud thing, um, just keep track of which cloud is the real stonk and hammer the bro. It'll, um, they'll go to different bros, so keep track of which bro it went to and which one it is. Um, and hammer that one. And then the other attack will just make a bunch of poison clouds. You just need to dodge all the different patterns. He has several different patterns. He can make a giant line across. He can make like a vertical line that you have to dodge with one bro. Uh, just kind of interesting. Also, this segment. These things are bouncy. When they're frozen, they are not bouncy. But when they're unfrozen, they are bouncy. So if you want to go down, have things frozen. If you want to go up, make them unfrozen. Like I said, just a bunch of cool things you can do with this one. And I like to go down first just because you can unfreeze and then you can actually make your way up because everything's unfrozen. So just rather convenient how things work out that way. But I believe up here is actually the item I was talking about earlier. Well, it's a bit higher than this, actually. Sort of misremembering my, uh, th this area, I guess. But it's a, it's a bit higher, I believe is the edit we're looking for. It should be over to the right here, although, yeah, I can't reach that from here. Um, so we'll just, I think we can make this jump. We can make, we can definitely make this jump. Come on. And then using C, Guardian Socks. You should recognize those things. We have those equipped to Luigi. So they, um, obviously they give eight HP back and two, um, SP. So we now have the ability to give this to both Mario and Luigi and have them both have an HP, eight SP, two auto restoring thing, which is great. I mean, this, it's definitely, um, when we're not, when we're fighting a boss, it's definitely a great alternative to, to Dizzy Boots. Obviously, um, during regular combat, those, di those Dizzy Boots, they're just so useful, man. Stunning those enemies is just such a godsend. So definitely, I mean, rec I definitely recommend Dizzy Boots, obviously. But um, when you're fighting bosses, the Guardian Socks are probably your best alternative. So, uh, when I guess when, when it comes to fighting bosses, do that. Anyway, this play over here is going to be our first uh, way back to this sort of central hub that I talked about. So if you want to, you can go back and save. Um, and as you can see, this other, there's going to be other um, pipes leading back to the central hub that we'll access later on. But that's not important for now. What's important is that we move forward and accidentally jump on the stunk. I was actually going to go underground that time, but nope. 
a thing. For just Luigi, you had to jump on the freaking stonk, didn't you? Surprisingly, they don't they don't give that much experience. So, in the end, I guess it's not um uh, they they aren't the best things to grind off of. I love how you can kind of, you can actually jump over there, but it's nothing hidden over there, alas. Anyway, we're gonna end the episode with one last little thing, and that is the second of these sort of dark star segments, because we're gonna actually run into a, quite a few of these uh, of him sort of eating DNA and gaining new abilities from Bowser, and then we have to sort of uh, attack it while without running into it, obviously, because running into it is a bad idea. This one's pretty simple though, actually. Uh, he hovers over by that bone-looking thing, and all you actually need to do uh, in order to stop it. And uh, they're sp sort of speaking their Italian boop -de -bop -de -boop -de -de -boop -de gibberish there. I do love the Italian gibberish, but all you need to do is hit that button, and then it gets stuck in the squishy. But apparently it's learned how to breathe fire as well. Man, this is not good. It has its punch. It has its fire. What's next, man? This thing's turning to Bowser. What could its plan possibly be? Well, that's something we'll actually be figuring out next time, guys. Uh, for now, this is Lucky70X signing out. Um... Yes, it pun just like Bowser. What's going on here, guys? We need to stop this thing from getting Bowser's DNA. What are we going to do? Well, I'll find out next time. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.